Welcome home. It's Irish Family History with curious news and notes, celebrating our fourth year of this podcast at the Irish Roots Cafe, where every day's a holiday and there's always room for one more. One of six broadcast series from the head school at irishroots.com. I'm Michael Laughlin, your host, publisher of rare Irish books and uh, information on every county in Ireland since 1978. Be sure to read our blog, complete with links to click on from this podcast, and search our master index and books for free. Molly, wet the tea, Katie, bar the door, Sweeney, clear that floor, and bring out the Irish dancers. It's time we get this show on the road. Well, it's show number 140, and among today's topics are Stratford is the name of the day, Pinner's Survey is the book extract for the day, an Aaron Islands video with some Sean Nose and some Irish speakers, Guinness webcam, and number five is it was tr- three o'clock for the world record in Ireland, number six, the ancient legend how the Irish got their freckles on a video. And number seven, hello, Fada, it's Renata. We've got all that and more coming up for you today. And remember to listen to all of our uh, uh, seven podcast series now on iTunes uh, just as soon as you get the chance or go to our web page at www.irishroots.com. Well, let's take a look at what's happening this week at the Irish Roots Cafe and the Head School. Well, you know, we've released the very first two episodes of Hello Fada, Accent on the Irish Language. Uh, The second episode comes out today, I believe, and it's being received very well, due in no small part to our head row instructor, Renata. And we all appreciate her help here, uh, right down here by the head rows. And be sure to take a listen to yourself. Uh, uh, You don't have to have any knowledge of the language to start enjoying these shows right away. Therefore, the curious and those who... uh, just might like language or just might consider taking a course in the future. Uh, hey, number two, we've also got three shows currently in season, and that's uh, Hello Fada, which is on the language, and uh, the Irish Family History, which is this one right now, and then we've got the Hedgerow History of Ireland, and they're all running real good. And I might alternate uh, this podcast with the others now and then just to give me a break and uh, make room, so to speak. So be sure to subscribe to them. So if this one happens to be uh, on a break for a week, you're in touch with the head school here all year long. And it's not hard to do. You just sign right up, and uh, one of them will be going. Plus, I am seriously going to try to bring at the uh, Irish Song and Recitation Festival uh, back in season here very quick. And uh, I also have a few on the Irish in America podcast ready to go. It's just a matter of finding the time. And that reminds me, if you know anybody who might like to sponsor the Hedgerow podcast, the Hedge Schools, or our webpage, let them know that we're interested. The Irish Song and Recitation Festival, home of song, story, and poetical proverb. Well, I ho- sure hope I can remember the words. You think you're up I'll to work. it? I'll try uh-huh. it. I'll try it. You got a few people out there. I know it's their favorite tune, so they're oh, going to be yeah. listening they will. particularly hard. There's a couple of girls out there by the name of Shannon, actually. That's oh, the- there are now. <laughs> uh, sounds good. <laughs> well, go out there, Peter, and we're going to talk to you just as soon as you're done if the crowd lets you come in. All right. Thanks, Mike. And now it's time for our one-minute podcast. 
There's a pretty spot in Ireland I always claim for my land Where the fairies and the blarney Will never, never die It's the land of the shillelagh My heart goes back there daily To the girl I left behind me When we kissed and said goodbye Where dear old Shannon's flowing Where the three-leaf shamrock grows Where my heart is I am going To my little Irish rose and the moment that I meet her With a hug and kiss I'll greet her For there's not a calling sweeter Where the river Shannon flows Oh, that was today's One Minute pod- Podcast, and that was Peter Riley Adams, my co-host on most of those episodes, and we're getting ready to bring up another season We talk not just about the song and have the song sung or the recitation. We talk a little bit about the history that's involved with it. So uh, it's a little bit different, and you get a little bit more than maybe you bargained for. Now we're coming up to the Book of the Month. Well, we picked uh, part of that series again, that series of books we have today, and that's a Special Census of Ireland uh, Pinner's Survey. And that book includes rare land owner records and historical notations, including counties Armagh, Tyrone, Donegal, Cavan, and Fermanagh. And it also has some notes on Londonderry or Derry. Now, you might ask, Uh, uh, What's it all about? Well, it was originally compiled as a result of the 17th century plantations of Ireland, uh, beginning around 1609, and it's a landholder's uh, census record, really, and it sets about to give us the results of the planting of families from outside of Ireland on the Irish lands, talks about the people who lost their land and the new people who got land, and uh, Pinner actually gives us the name and the condition of uh, undertakers and servitors and the uh, principal uh, natives that were on these lands in the province of Ulster. And the footnotes by uh, uh, Hill are very interesting as well, sometimes more interesting than the text, because he had, adds some uh, knowledge and color to uh, the facts there. And he sometimes brings updates on families and events right on into the 19th century. Uh, now, if you take a look at some of these families, who were they? Well, you got names like Atchison and Alexander and Bingley and Beresford. And then you got O'Donnell and O'Boyle and Brown, Chichester, McCaffrey, Butler, McBrien, Coe, Dillon, Hamilton. Uh, there were actually 30 listings for Hamiltons, believe it or not. Uh, a lot of Hamilton uh, in that book. Uh, and also names like Moore and McGuire and O'Neill and O'Reilly. Uh, Stewart, Richardson, Wilson, and Ray, and hundreds of more, more than I can even mention here. But here's an extract on the name for the day. Uh, Actually, Strafford is the spelling here. And it says there was an order to restore the estate that was issued by the Earl of Strafford when the Lord Lieutenant of Ireland uh, had this order formed the sixth article of impeachment against Strafford. Oh, that order formed the sixth article of impeachment against Strafford on his trial in 1642, and that was a land case that involved Richard Rolston and the plantation of settlers in Ulster in the 17th century. And they also mention uh, several other Irish names. And uh, note the name, the date of that trial way back then, and the name of the people involved. It's one other way you can trace a little bit and get a little bit of knowledge about your ancestors. And uh, that's the book of the day. <laughs> Well, you know, that means we've got the Magnificent Seven coming up. And I want you to remember that we've got three things out there on this podcast. We've got a podcast that I'm uh, talking into right now. We've got a blog reader that simply reads my blog. 
And then we also have the blog that you can get on. You can get all of those on the web page. And then, you know, you can also get this podcast as an enhanced podcast, which has uh, photographs on it come up as you listen. And you have little links that you can click on uh, while you listen if you want to. And uh, it's just one more thing that you can do. But now let's take a look at those Magnificent Seven. Number one, Phyllis Stevenson of Tahoe City, California. Welcome as a new member of your county, Dublin. Another book has shipped, and she's researching the possible existence of two Ill illegitimate sons of Mason Gerard Benjamin Stratford, the fifth Earl of Aldborough. Number two, Kathleen Haravi of Roxbury, Massachusetts. Welcome as a gold member. Your free book selection, The Surnames of Ireland, as a member has shipped as a full member. Uh, looking for the birth info on Michael Kirby, born 1810, and wife Margaret Cogan, born 1812, married in 1843 at Donomore County, Cork. Number three, Marjorie Waller of Vineyard Haven, Massachusetts. Welcome as a new member. And they're searching for uh, Kelleher, Hurley, Sweeney, and Lehan in Cork, and Galligan in and Kanati in Cavan, Ireland. And Marcia Green and Kathy Rast and William Power and Joyce Lynn Miller of the UK and uh, Louisiana and uh, <laughs> just about anywhere you can think of. Thank you very much. We wouldn't be here without your help. Well, let's take a look at the name today. It's one that uh, you don't see too often put up there on the Irish uh, annals, uh, in other uh, works anyway. But the name is Stratford, and it's in honor of Phyllis Stevenson. We mentioned just a little bit ago on the, one of the Magnificent Seven. And there's several ways to spell the name, as I'm sure you might know. Sometimes they make it Stradford. And sometimes they can make it uh, Stratford, like I said, and that can ha that change can happen at any time. So uh, don't get too hung up on the spelling. And uh, we got some variant spelling uh, uh, groups from the Guide to the Various Spellings of Irish Family Names. I've got a link to that on the blog. And if we take just a short look at what we find on the name, there's not a whole lot. I read that excerpt from the... Uh, uh, Conquest of Ireland series there uh, a little bit earlier to give you some information but we find that it appears in several of our genealogical works and uh, the Irish Book of Arms shows the family seat of power at Balting Glass in County Wicklow uh, where one of the name was created Lord Balting Glass in the 18th century linked to a John Stratford now, the name is also found in our works on Cork and Clare and in the north of Ireland, like I mentioned earlier, in the 17th century there. And uh, this is based in part on the Book of Irish Families, Great and Small. That's the master volume to our 36-volume uh, or 34-volume set on uh, uh, the history of uh, Irish families by county in Ireland. Now, if we take a look, real quick look again at the Irish family coats of arms from the Irish Book of Arms, uh, we're going to see that there's two illustrated arms for that name or that family or the individual who held those uh, uh, coats of arms. And one's from 1768, and it's from a heraldic work of that date. And that says that it was granted in 1763, and a picture appears in the Irish Book of Arms. Number two, there's an illustrated uh, picture of the arms appearing uh, in the Irish Book of Arms from a heraldic work in 1806, and that's tied to County Wicklow as well. And it is also fully pictured in the Irish Book of Arms, but it's an old picture, and we took it as we found it right out of the old book, and that was from a, a book in 1806. So it's not a perfect illustration, but it sure is real. And uh, hey, remember, coming up later in this episode... The salmon start jumping after a 200-year absence. That's pretty interesting. Now, if we take a look at that free master index online, uh, we see listings for the name or variants of it over 20 times. That's on our webpage. And we see Strat Ford in the uh, Families of Cork book and also in the Families of Clare and also in the 1659 Census of Ireland and in the County Cork Genealogy and Family History Notes book. 
And the same for the Kildare, Wicklow, and Carlow genealogy book. And if we go to the Annals of Ireland by the Four Masters, that old classic, uh, you're going to find a listing in the index there for Stratfords. So they're well noted. And you're also going to find uh, Stratford in that special census of Ireland, uh, which is Penner's survey. But don't mix that survey up with uh, Pender, who also did a survey in 1659, a survey of sort. Those are two separate, uh, two separate items. Uh, boy, what have we got coming up next here? I think it's around the world in Irish ways. Well, we're going to jump onto the web here and see if there's some interesting things that you might like to uh, peruse at your leisure. We've got links to them. You can just click on them. If you're listening to the Enhanced Podcast, a few of them are going to be uh, on there that you can click. And if not, you can go right to our blog and click on them there. Uh, number one, we have an Aaron Isle uh, travel video. And they've got a little bit of old style talking there and a little bit of Sean Nose. And uh, that's on YouTube, and the link's on the blog. Number two, we've got another video, and it's on the Plantation of Ulster and Conquest of Ireland video, uh, tied to that book of the uh, week this week. Just thought you might like it. And then we have a BBC tree planting world record attempt, and then we have how the Irish got their language and their freckles. It's all explained in the video. Hey, I tell you, and that video was pretty interesting. Uh, it goes through a whole old line, old time story, and it talks, uh, it's, a, it's an old, old legend, and it talks about uh, how the Irish uh, got their freckles. It wasn't by accident. It was an act of uh, a superior being, they say, and uh, that just shows they were paying attention to that way back when. I bet you that was over a thousand years ago. You know, that legend could have gone back 2,000 years. I'll have to go back and listen to that again because uh, it's hard to uh, pick it all out. But, uh, I, oh, you know, I mentioned that BBC tree planting uh, world record attempt. Well, the most trees planted by 100 people ever happened in Ireland uh, recently right alongside the River Foyle. And they pr planted just a, just a whole slew of uh, trees. You wouldn't believe it possible. And that would be the re-greening of Ireland because, you know, they lost a whole lot of trees in Ireland in the 17th century since we mentioned that earlier here. Uh, Ireland used to have a lot more trees than it does, or it sure looked a lot different. And uh, 17th century, they, had, they brought in industry and they had to fire uh, coal fires, furnaces with the lumber, and they cut the trees down and used it for industry. And when they run out of trees, they just shut the... Uh, shut the furnaces down in most of those places. So it's sure uh, the beginning of that century and the end of that century sure looked a lot different in Ireland. And it really uh, sort of poetic because the trees were mowed down and uh, so was the old culture. That's the 17th century, one of the most tumultuous in the whole history of Ireland. Just a little note if you're looking for your folks back then. Now it's time for Curious News and Notes. Well, let's see, what do we have from Ireland today? The uh, Guinness webcam is uh, broadcasting to everyone from Dublin's highest vantage point, uh, at least by camera, and it's a very famous view from the Gravity Bar in Dublin. So uh, you can either go to that Gravity Bar and look, or you can just hop on uh, uh, to the web and take a look at it. The link's on the blog. It's at GuinnessStorehouse.com. Number two, there's a high-speed, high-capacity broadband that's coming to the Aran Islands. So it's not your father's Aran Islands anymore. They're coming right up to speed. I don't know if that's for good or if, or if that's for ill. Uh, but Ennis Man and Ennis Moore and Ennis Or, now uh, they're fully linked to the web, and uh, it's been done. So I guess the farthest points in Ireland are now able to communicate instantly. That's really sort of good for those that uh, are in other places and might want to contact them, isn't it? Hey, number three, are the Irish getting old? 
Over one million people now for the first time over the age of 55, some folks are saying. And some politicians are calling that inspirational. And those poor old people who suffer discriminations more than anyone else, according to Senator Mary White. Well, are you calling everyone over 55 aged and helpless? I think you might be going for some votes there because uh, I don't think of us like that at all. Oh, did I give myself away there? Well, that was from an article in the Irish Times. We've got a link on the blog. And number four, did you know that the Welsh go to the pub 3,998 times during a lifetime compared to the national average of 3,528 Northern Ireland was well below that with 2,686 visits a year. Now, how would you like to have the job of sitting there counting how many times a person goes into a pub in their lifetime? That would be a very interesting thing, and I wonder just how they figured it all out. And uh, that study was sponsored, by the way, not by our tax dollars for a change, but uh, for an upcoming TV channel promoting Save Our Boozer series, which is about revamping and restoring the pubs in Ireland. Uh, What a name you got there. That was out of the Belfast Telegraph, and uh, they got a link to that on the blog. And let me see, number five, Jumping Salmon Return After Centuries. Gosh, I guess it's on the River uh, Mono in Wales, and that's perhaps a side effect of the return of global warming. No, I think they built a little... uh, a really uh, new fish pass over there, and that let the fish get back upstream. So that just goes to show you things aren't all going in the wrong direction. Uh, We're smart enough now, we think we are at least, to bring some of these things back. And those salmon had been prevented from uh, jumping upstream by man-made actions, I believe, and now man-made actions are putting them back in force. So let's hope we can see some more of that. Well, you know, that does it. Just remember... Every day's a holiday at the Irish Roots Cafe. That's all for today, folks. Joseph, warm up those pipes. Remember, we have a broadcast series on Irish song and recitation, on local history of the Irish in America, and on 2,000 years of Irish history, as well as on the counties, and something special coming up on Irish language, I hope. Uh, We've got all that and more at our head school at irishroots.com. And you know, we've been known to appear, exhibit, teach, and even sing for your special events. Be sure to book in advance if it's important. And write me at my American address at Irish Roots Cafe, Box 7575, Kansas City, Missouri, 64116. Leave a message by phone at 816-256-3360. Reach me on my webpage at irishroots.com. Skype me at the Irish Roots Cafe. Uh, Get me on MySpace, Facebook, Twitter, and Irish Central. Members foot the bill so they get first priority, but we're open to all. And by the way, a big thank you to all of our members. And away. Away.